Can we all agree that the summer 2016 has been a major crap fest so far? But you know what? I ain't mad. Fall is here. And we got our Oscar contenders, our animated movies, a new Marvel movie, and some other stuff. Hey guys, Julian Green here with another installment of Juju Reviews, and you know what? It is the end of summer. We got, we slugged through the pile of junk that wasn't Captain America Civil War and Kubo on the Two Strings. Now we are officially moving into the fall movie season. And honestly, this is one of my favorite movie seasons because this is when the Oscar contenders come out. These are when the movies that seem a little bit more focused and they got a little bit more uh, love put into them. This is a happy time to be a cinephile, I might say that. Now, a lot of my friends, every time, you know, when Oscar season comes around and they see the Oscar nominees, the first thing they want to say is, I don't even know when these movies even come out. How does this happen? Well, I'm letting you know right now, this is when these movies come out. I'm going to be talking about some of these movies that you know and some of these movies that you don't know. So strap in. Now, forewarning, I'm not doing a most anticipated list. I'm not doing a list of a particular order. These are just movies that I just listed and that I'm going to talk about whether I am excited for them or not. With that being said, let's get started. Got my list right here. Ooh, Magnificent Seven. Now you guys have probably seen previous to this. It's coming out in I think like a week or so. Magnificent Seven is gonna be bonkers. I mean, first off, you got Chris Pratt, Denzel Washington, Vincent D'Onofrio. It's pretty much a remake of the Magnificent Seven Western that came out a couple decades ago. And that itself is a retelling of the Seven Samurai. Now this story has been told time and time and time again in different versions. Even Bugs Life did it. But to see it with this amazing cast, like I don't, I'm super excited regardless. Oh, another one that I'm super excited about is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Now those of you who don't no, this is a spinoff of the Harry Potter franchise set 60 years in America so we actually get to see American Wizards it is gonna be set in New York of all places so I wonder I please let this scene be in here let somebody be on a broomstick flying down the street and somebody kind of like cuts them off and then I want to hear somebody go hey I'm flying here I'm flying here please let it please let it happen okay but I'm more excited about this movie because it's gonna be a Harry Potter as story that I really don't know much about don't even have prior knowledge of reading an existing book or a script like the really crappy one from Chris Trump but you know what? That's a separate video. I'll link that in the description below. But it's good to see something in this universe that I love so much and to see something new. All right, moving right along. Okay, this one. Okay, you guys got to listen to this. You hear me? Okay. Passengers. Now, this movie, di I didn't even know it was being made. But this movie cost a lot of stirrup and it didn't even have a trailer. Okay, basically what happened was there was this picture. This simple picture of Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence looking through a window. And that already got me hyped. Like, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence, I would watch two hours of them just looking through a window. But... My juvenile predictions aside, this is what the movie is actually about. So basically they are passengers who are riding on this spaceship to this other planet that's 190, 80 years away. And what happens is everyone in this spaceship is cryogenically frozen, like in this like kind of homeostasis type of thing. And these two wake up 90 years too early. So now they got this whole spaceship by themselves and then you have this really off kilter but very sincere love story set in space. Think like Wally, -E, but with actual humans. But then they find out that something is endangering this spaceship so now they have to save everybody on the ship before they wake up and reach their destination. So I mean, I love love stories. I love sci-fi. It's a big reason why her is like my number two favorite movie of all time. And it has Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. You know what guys? Look for this during Oscar season because it definitely has that interstellar Christopher Nolan type feel to it. Might just sweep the visual defect effects apartment. I'm so excited. I can't even say words right. All right, so now we got things like Bad Santa 2. I didn't even know they were really making that one. I mean, are we really begging for a Bad Santa 2? Birth of a Nation? Nah. I mean, there's been a lot of controversy because of what Nate Parker was doing in his actual life. You know, the rape allegations and things of that sort. And I honestly think that's going to give the movie a boost in ticket sales for seeing it. But as far as the quality of the movie goes... Honestly, it just looks like a glorified TV movie to me. Like, I'm not really excited to see that. Yeah, I'll see it to see for myself to see if it's any good, but it's already getting Oscar buzz strictly off of the allegations that are happening outside of the movie. All right, you got Rings. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a sequel to The Ring. And you know what, this one, I'm not even gonna like think too much about it because they're trying to set it in the modern age and it's like, you could tell a studio executive said, hey, let's do Rings, but instead of cassette tapes, Let's do social media and internet. And they just kind of, just stop. You got Ouija 2. I didn't even, I mean, I put Ouija 1 out of my mind as soon as I seen it. So I'm not really excited for that at all. Bridget Jones's baby. Okay, so for those of you who are Bridget Jones's fans who love the first and second one, you got this one. So good job. You'll have fun. Okay, so we have another one called When the Bowl Breaks that stars Regina Hall and Morris Chestnut. Now it does, now it, I'm gonna just tell you the plot and you tell me if this sounds familiar. A couple who have this woman 
who, you know, she helps them in their regular life and turns out that this woman is crazy. She gets obsessed uh, uh, with the male figure. Does that sound familiar? Because it's the exact same premise as Obsessed starring Beyonce and Idris Elba. The only difference with this movie is, is that this woman is the surrogate. So she has a little bit more attachment to the couple that the movie is starring. You know what? I honestly believe that my family is going to like make a trip to see this in the theater because they think it's going to be an Oscar contender. <laughs> All right, so you also got Snowden coming out pretty soon. Now, Snowden is an interesting case. Now, if you guys don't know about Snowden, Snowden was the guy who pretty much leaked all of NASA's information, and he revealed that the government is actually watching us through our cell phones, through our social media accounts, everything. And now this guy is currently, yeah, he's currently on the run in Russia or somewhere off in the world. He's just not in America because they're trying to find him. This is a movie starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and this movie was actually supposed to come out last year. It's been delayed. It's been pushed back. I think they're doing it to give it more of the Oscar buzz so that it gets the attention that it deserves. So just remember, Snowden, Joseph Gordon-Levitt might be nominated for Best Actor in this category. All right? Keep an eye out for it. All right, guys, so we can all agree that the animation department this year has been phenomenal. I mean, we have movies like Zootopia. We have Finding Dory. We had... Kubo and the two strings which I just saw and it's fantastic so let's hope that the animation studios can keep this thing rolling and they somebody won't be the first one to mess up in a great year for animation so we got movies like Trolls done by DreamWorks Tro DreamWorks needs to stop I mean just give me my How to Train Your Dragon 3 and I'll be fine a movie that looks actually pretty funny Storks you guys have probably seen a preview you know the Storks are running this Amazon like company where they deliver babies something goes haywire and they have to take care of an actual baby Sounds like a fun romp. But hands down, what I'm most excited for in the animation department is Moana. Now Moana looks like it's gonna be super good because first off, you have Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing a Disney sidekick. That's exactly what you want. I'm seeing like genie levels of awesomeness coming out of this role, all right? Add in the fact that this is the first Polynesian princess, you got my ticket already. Now honestly, this year I think for best animated feature, it's gonna be a fight between Moana, Kubo on the Two Strings, and Finding Dory and Zootopia, sorry four-way fight because that just popped into my mind right now oh my god unless like a foreign animated film comes in there this is going to be a really tough race to predict and i'm just i don't know i don't know all right you got sully now sully is another movie that sounds really familiar let me see if you can guess this one a pilot who safely flies down a plane that was about to crash otherwise and now the government's questioning how he did it yep if it sounds familiar to robert zemeckis's flight starring denzel washington it is, except this one just swaps out a drunk Denzel for a more sober Tom Hanks. Got it? Okay, that's another one you should look for Oscar season as well. All right, Oscar contender, put a star on it. The Accountant. Now, for those of you guys who are sipping the Kool-Aid, you guys used to hate Ben Affleck, but now he made up the best Batman ever. He has a new movie out, and I know you're going to see it. In the movie, he's just basically an accountant that works for crime bosses. But he has an extra set of skills. Boo a Medea Halloween. Medea is making... A Halloween that movie a lot of these which I'm gonna name off these are the Oscar season movies you can totally tell that this is an Oscar season thing so for those of you who say you don't know when these movies come out I'm letting you know right now all right all right so you got the girl on the train starring Emily Blunt and Rebecca Ferguson but this is a movie about a woman who is a basic everyday commuter on this train and every single day she sees this house and she sees some shady stuff going on so she decides to investigate looks like an awesome crime thriller now I do believe that Emily Blunt uh, is just trying to get this Oscar nomination. She deserved one for Sicario last year and she needs to get one this year. Disney has another movie that they're like kind of pushing for the Oscars. A couple years ago it was Saving Mr. Banks. This year it is called Queen of Catway. The movie stars Lupita Nyong'o and David Abiello. I can't figure out his name. David O. They discover this little girl who is a actual chess prodigy and so now they're trying to help her achieve her dream of becoming a chess champion in Africa. Sounds like a good feel good movie. I might go check that out actually. The Arrival. Now speaking of you know Interstellar and Christopher Nolan as sci-fi movies this movie pretty much is about these alien spaceships that land on earth and Jeremy Renner who's actually playing a mathematician. A couple years of playing bad guys and dudes shooting arrows and spies now he's playing a mathematician. This guy's really talented, guys. You guys are sleeping on Jimmy Renner, okay? And Amy Adams, who pretty much gets nominated for every movie that she's in, who's a linguist. 
They're investigating exactly why are they here and what are they going to do about it. Manchester by the Sea, Casey Affleck and Michelle Williams. Now, Casey Affleck is the Affleck brother that a lot of people other than cinephiles don't really know about. And he's really talented. I honestly think he's probably one of the best actors of the two. And Michelle Williams did movies like Blue Valentine and My Week with Marilyn. And she, this girl's just amazing. She also gets nominated for a lot of movies that she has done. So it's a story about this estranged couple who are taking care of the de of the husband's dead brother's uh, son, so his nephew. And they also have to like like work on their marriage as well. All right, you got this movie called Allied starring Marion Cotillard, Marion Cat I need to take French, and Brad Pitt. They're playing spies in World War II. Now, whether they're on the same side or opposite side, that remains to be seen. But the point is, is that they fall in love during this thing. So it's a love story set in World War II, period piece. I smell Best Picture nomination, Oscar bait worthiness. Last year, we got Creed, and Creed was a phenomenal boxing movie, all right? This year, we're getting Miles Teller's new boxing movie, Bleed for This. All right, now this one, dude. Okay, so lastly, this is a movie I didn't even know about until I started looking for movies to make this list. Now, it, now, if you know me personally, you know that I am a super huge fan of the movie Slumdog Millionaire. A lot of people don't like it that much, but I personally love that movie. It's great from a screenwriting standpoint. One of my favorite breakout stars to come out of that movie was Dave Patel. Now, I hope this is his comeback from that god-awful last Airbender movie, but this movie is called Lion. Now, get this. Dave Patel is playing a 25-year-old Indian man, right? He was adopted by an Australian family. So this movie follows him trying to find his birth family. So you mean to tell me we get an Indian character who was raised by Australians, so we might get Dave Patel with an Australian accent? Okay, all right. Okay, I know what I'm gonna go see when, when during this week. I'm seeing Lion, so please keep an eye out for that. I'll let you know. If you see it, don't say you didn't know about it you know about it. All right, and a lot of people I know are gonna be screaming at me saying like, why do you put Rogue One in here? Well, I honestly consider that uh, Christmas, which is winter, which is like a Christmas present to me. So I'm not gonna put it on this list. So yeah, guys, that's my list. So uh, if you guys have any other movies that I missed, anything else that you are super anticipating, just let me know in the comments down there. And yeah, this fall season looks like it's shaping up to be a really good fall season for movies. Let's just hope it's a lot better than the summer that we had. Let's just, the sooner we forget the summer, other than Captain America and a few other ones, the better. Just know that I'm a dude in his room talking to a camera. Love you and I'm